Not enough nonsense in your life. Need a little more. More? Well, get ready, because these two have it in spades. Yes, I do. Loose talk. What are you talking about? Nonsense. Even looser opinions. Is it fine? And you're along for the ride. Everybody strap in. This is The Burble with Benny and Az. And welcome to another episode of The Burble, freshly uncensored. G'day, it's Benny here. As is here. And uh, look, as upon uh, listening back to last week's uh, podcast, uh, we were quite ranty. We got on the rant quite often, which we're going to do again tonight. We started out strong. We did I'm, start I'm really strong. impressed you got Steve in. He's hard to track down. The internet. The internet, yeah. Oh, mate, to, to book him in, that was so difficult. <laughs> That's why we've been off the air so long. We've been waiting for Steve. Yeah, Steve's come along now. Hopefully he's going to do a few few things for us and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. That is the internet otherwise known as Steve. Steve. There you go. Nonsense. That's on the plate for you this evening. This is the burble. That's all we talk about. Fort Lauderdale Police over the United States. And by the way, I think this is going to be US heavy this week by account because all of this content basically points a finger at, at America. Uh, the land say, of the free. Why are you so stupid over there? Uh, Dead look. said. Uh, cops over in Fort Lauderdale mistook Star Trek memorabilia as weapons. They're getting sued for that. Oh, dear. I know. Uh, a home inspector's been caught on nanny cam pleasuring himself with an Elmo doll. He, uh, He's facing charges. Oh, I bet he wasn't tickling Elmo. A metal band. You're going to like this because you're a cat fan. A metal band made up of cats has dropped its first single for charity. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Vladimir Putin's been named the hottest man in Russia. Well, that would have been a fair and, and just election. election sort of thing, wouldn't no, it? I don't think so. Yuri Geller reckons that he take, he's taking credit for unsticking the Suez Canal. Well, you can't disprove him, really, can you? Can't prove it I think it he's either. losing it in his old age. And uh, next, we're going to talk about a woman who is baffled by something that we just do every single day here in Australia. It's got something to do with laundry. Oh, I was going to say swear, drink beer. And do the laundry at the take, same time. Take the piss out of Americans. That's what we're going to do right now. Settle in. It's the burble. Loose talk. Even looser opinions. The burble. This caught my eye as, and this is why I want to point the finger at Americans and go, why Why you got to be so dumb? Hey, <laughs> seriously, like, they don't get, A, the concept of the rest of the world, and B, they never speak to anyone outside their country to go, do, what, what do Australians, what do English, what do Africans think of the United States? You know what shits me the most about what? Americans? What? They microwave water to make it hot to make tea. They don't have kettles. My mum used to do that. Your mum's a monster. Yeah. Well, we already knew that anyway. Yeah, well, true, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, they don't they don't believe in kettles. It's like you put a tea bag in cold water and you put it in the microwave. Now if that happened to me and you handed me that cup, I would grab it by the handle and I'd smash in the face with it. Sorry, my phone's, <laughs> your phone's going, going off. off there. Steve, Steve, leave me alone. I told you this is Aaron time. He's fixing it for you. Um, look, this woman now, apparently she's an influencer. Big on Instagram, all that kind of thing. She's made a video. This is what she says. Australians specifically. So here in America, when we do our laundry days, we put everything in the washer and they take it out and put it in the dryer. And then within 20, 30 minutes, everything's dry and you just put it away, like in the closets and stuff. Okay, yep, seems normal. Yeah, when it's raining. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm surprised that they just don't take out a gun and shoot things dry. She goes on. Australia, almost every single influencer I see that does laundry day, takes it from the washer and then hangs it up throughout their house on like these drying racks. Do you guys just not have dryers? Are you kidding me? I don't know what to say. Actually, what's her name? Is it Brittany? I don't know what it is. Oh, Miranda. Sorry, it's Miranda. (sighs) Miranda. Now, look. I personally, she's targeting me. I'm feeling triggered. Mm -hmm. I don't have a dryer. I am not in a house where I can actually fit a dryer. You've got a hill hoist, though. That's exactly right. You know where that was invented? Here. Fucking Australia. Right here. Exactly. Is that, like, not a thing? Is it, like, a... Like a pollution thing or something? Yeah, it's a pollution yeah, thing. Well, you, you, she's nailed it right She has head. nailed it because America don't give a fuck about the planet. Or the concept of the rest of the world. Or, you know, like pollution. Like, so you spend 30 minutes polluting the atmosphere with more carbon footprints or whatever it is. Yep. By putting shit in a dryer on a perfectly good sunny day where you can hang stuff out. And actually, it's nicer when it comes in off the line. Yes. It's softer. Yep. It smells better. That's right. And 
it doesn't get musty. No, that's exactly what it is. And so, like, for example, outside of this studio, because I'm all domesticated and mm-hmm. shit here at the Burble, mm. I have laundry that's on racks at the moment, and I've got a fan next to it just to simulate outside. And you know what? They're not called laundry racks. No. Let's confuse Americans even more. You know what we hang our clothes on inside when it's raining? The clothes horse. <laughs> Or, yes, that's right. The clothes GG. She she continues. Um, please let me know. If you're like live in Australia and you don't own a dryer, is there like a reason for that? I, I just don't understand. Thanks. Okay, bye. My kangaroo is tired from running on the treadmill. Yeah. I wanted to give him a break. That's yeah. why I don't have a dryer. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Because um, he's got to take me to work every day because I jump in the pouch and off we go. That's how the mail's delivered, America. If you didn't know that, that's how mm. our mail gets delivered. Now, listen, look, why don't you just do your research rather than just mouthing off? Like, come on. She ain't going to get views, Benny. That's why. But, so she's, oh, so she, she's, she's, she's an influencer. She, You can't even say that properly. I, I, I can't because I just want to, like, tear off a strip of wall and hit the nearest person with it whenever I hear that word. Influencer. Ah. I know, it annoys me oh. too. So Miranda basically doesn't know the concept that, look, it, it, it's a free world. It's her cho- It's our choice. If you, if you don't want to have, if you don't want to have a dryer, then don't have one. You've got one. I've got one. Yeah, and it's convenient when it is, but you don't use it all the time. No. Why is that? Because A, it's noisy. Yes. It heats up the house. Yes. And it costs a shit ton of money to run. That's exactly right. So there you go, Miranda. That's the reason why. Because I, I care about, like, not killing birds and fish and things like that yeah. and stuff. Uh, that is the reason. We've given you all the responses. I don't need to respond to your Instagram whatsoever. I'm not going to do don't that. Don't we clap back? Now or something on her TikTok? Isn't that what you do? That's the influencer it. puts something up and then you clap back with I've something I've never witty. used TikTok. I, neither have I. I think TikTok's dumb. Isn't it just Vine? Remember Vine? Yeah, I remember Vine. Isn't TikTok just Vine? Yeah, it's Vine 2.0. That's all it is. Mm. If, you're a, if you're a TikTok user, what are you using TikTok for? We would love to know. Get in touch with us, verbal.com.au. Send us a message through there. You can certainly do that. Or hit me up on MySpace. Loose talk. Even looser opinions. This is the best show on earth. This is The Verbal. As let's talk about these police over in Fort Lauderdale who <laughs> mistook memorabilia for weapons. Oh, I can't wait. What did they... did? They mistake. Was it well, a batleth? Yeah, well, look, they mistook all of this Star Trek memorabilia for weapons when they used excessive force in arresting two brothers. Mm. Now, I don't know if the brothers were there and having a fight and pulled out phases and whatnot and tried to beam each other up. <laughs> this is exactly like the story we covered last year where the police beat down a poor girl in a stormtrooper outfit because they thought she was robbing a bloody comic book store. Well, listen to this. Two brothers, Raymond and Randall Purcell, alleged that their civil rights were violated when police used excessive force after responding to a call about one of their cars having been keyed. Yes, so hang on, they called the police to assist them and then the police ended up, what, like just laying yes. the nightsticks in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, listen. Love America. Let me dive into this further. Go. The, the two officers arrived. They said there would be no investigation who keyed the car because the damage was below $1,000. That's were, state were law. Were these two um, bros, look, I, I don't want to go there, but I'm going to because it's America. Were these two bros people of colour? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. The story's not telling me that. Mm. But after Raymond hit his hand off the car in frustration and attempted to go inside, officers then allegedly used excess force to arrest him. Now, oh, so he just went, fuck this. He's banged on the, he's the, banged car. On the car like said, that. See you later. You know, you're, you're not going to do anything. So the copper just went. I'm going to put you in headlock. Yep. The officer allegedly hit him. By the way, the person was frustrated. Mm. He's 62 years old and disabled and hit him with the butt of his gun, slammed him on the ground, pulled his arm so hard that it snapped and punched him in the face with so much force that it knocked Raymond's acrylic partial dentures out of his mouth. Bloody hell. When his brother attempted to help, the yeah, he copper... Got, he copped it too. ...got knocked down and put his foot on his face, leaving a cut near his eye. What? Where is the Star Trek memorabilia in all of this? I'm, yeah. Okay. Okay. So in that case, they knew that they had guns and they felt threatened with all of these weapons all over the wall in the house. They so were replica phases. The weapons were Star Trek memorabilia. Oh, for fuck. Fuck's sake. However, though, the 62-year-old Raymond Purcell mm. has a legal concealed firearms permit. Oh, look out. So the brothers are now suing for 75000 they, they uh They should be because apparently in America it's it's okay to have a gun. 
You've yep. got to have a permit for it, right? Correct. But then the police beat you up and stuff, and then you can go, what is it, Second Amendment, the right to arm yep. bears Bear or something? Arm, <laughs> arm bears, yep. um, uh, So that's what happened. This is way back in April of 2017 that this incident actually occurred. So now, I've been dealing with the police force for four years. and Bloody hell. Yeah, so they are uh, dealing with this, but... Uh, they're gonna. It's gonna go to um, administrative uh, arbitration and whatever and oh, all that so kind of the, thing. The judge went, "Nah, you're police. You can't do no wrong. You're out." Something like that. Because that's. I hate to say it, and I don't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it. In the trial of that um, idiot, who I'm not gonna name, that uh, left his knee on that uh, gentleman's neck oh, last yeah. year. Yeah. He's gonna get off. Really? I think that the system over there is that corrupt that they're gonna let him go, and shit's gonna go down. That's really strange. America's because- gonna burn. And then they're going to blame the people that riot. They're not going to blame the copper. No. It's it's going to turn around. The old crusty white guys in charge are going to turn this into a PR stunt. Yeah, look, I, I, I would hope, because I've been following it quite closely, and I would say that it has all of the signs that he is going to go down and go I to jail. I hope he does. I really hope he does. Not like the Rodney King um, incident, which yeah. then sparked, you know, the, riot, the famous LA riots mm. um, in the early 1990s. But uh, I I don't know. That's strange. Your mail must be different to my mail, but no, I- I'm looking at it and I can just see that I think America's too institutionalized in its racism and violence, and it's not going to get away with it. So, why is it that it always seems like nearly every single week we are either getting alternating stories of excess police violence and use of force, and then the next week after that, oh look at that, we've got another mass shooting again. It's almost like clockwork. It is like you could write an almanac on this and. Pop Pop it down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, as you know what time the sun is going to rise and you know what time it's going to set. Which school's going to get shot up in America. Which school, which turn and, is it? And that's, the problem is, they're not trying to fix the guns. They're just saying, all right, well, we'll put armed security guards in all the schools. That's not fixing the that's job. That's a band-aid solution at best. So, you know, they said that they wanted to hand uh, armed teachers and administrative yeah. staff at yeah. schools. Is that fixing the problem or is that a no. severe blindsided band-aid? But I'd like to know what listeners uh, of the Burble will think of that. Reach mm. out to us. Let us know. Uh, the Burble, au at gmail.com. You can find us on our website, which is au. Sad to sound a little bit like talkback radio. It does a bit. And tell them Steve sent you. 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. $50 cash. Call us now. Hit us up on the socials at theburble.com.au. You know what I like? What's that? I like prime ministers that aren't dickheads. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. I like the fact that back in the 80s, our prime ministers weren't afraid to drop insults, weren't afraid to skull a yard glass. In fact, this fact should be taught in schools everywhere. You know that viral video of Hawkey sculling, sculling the beers in the, the cricket? Yep. I actually, I turned around in line once at the SCG. He was right behind mm-hmm. me and... Uh, I, I just said, Mr. Hawk, these are for you. And he grabbed two of them and just would chunk, could chunk everyone was cheering. This is back in the days before you had a TV studio in your pocket. Mm. So you weren't able to film it. Yep. But I've never been prouder of sitting in Bay 13 <laughs> at the SCG in my life. Hawkey, mm. Hawkey. You, met, you met Hawkey too? I've met Hawkey a few times. Down the train station. Everyone's met Hawkey. Ben and at Chifley Ben Chifley's house. House, yes. Yep. I got on local news. That's, that's Back right. Back when we had two channels. You were in the local rag. Yeah, I was. But no, I love a good larrikin Australian Australian Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Now, Would you as, say Keating's one? He was a great one. Because he, like, he was an educated bogan, right? But yeah. he, he was... What did they used to call him? He had the most vitriolic tongue of any Prime Minister ever. He could eviscerate a an opponent across the bloody chamber yep. and call them like... Fucking idiots. Yeah. But with the best vocabulary. I I think the best thing he ever said in Parliament was, we're not going to go to an election because I want to do you slowly. Oh, that's right. And then he also said to Dr. John Hewson, it said being challenged by him is like being flogged with a wet newspaper. Yes, he had a great turn of phrase. I loved Keating. But I think in Australian schools, in history, we should all be taught that our Prime Minister, Bob Hawke, was the world record holder for sculling a yard of beer. That's right. For quite Quite a long time. And I think that's the problem with this country. Prime Ministers don't scull yards of beer anymore. But look, a Prime Minister of late, closer to our time frame, sure. that probably could scull a yard of beer. K-Money. 
Ah, yes. Oh, Kevin Rudd. Kevin Rudd. Kevin 07. Kevin 07. Now, he's a... He's a...